Good afternoon. Uh, we would like to thank Yildesink uh, Technic University to the Department of Western Languages and Literatures, Translation and Interpreting for this organization. Before we start, I would like to introduce myself and my colleague Hilal Arkazancı to you. We are the graduates of Ajetepe University, Department of Translation and Interpreting. We both received our PhD degrees from UVA, UK, and we have been lecturing at Ajetepe University since then. This study that, we'll, that we will present today is seek to explore how the mosaic of digital networks reconstructs literary translation practices. To this end, we will focus on Mark Danielewski's postmodern novel, House of Leaves, which is composed of five intermixed narratives and paratextual materials, such as footnotes and typographical variation. Uh, my part of the presentation covers an introduction to the uh, author and the novel, and uh, its paratextual, sign -ic iconic, and ergodic features that borders House of Leaves on a position between analogous space and digital space. Uh, I would like to begin with the author Mark Danielewski. Uh, he's an American author who won the New York Public Library's Young Lions Fiction Award in 2000 with his first novel, Pause of Leaves. During his childhood, Danielewski moved around the US and lived in six different countries because of his father's uh, various film projects. In the following years, he admitted that his experiences in those countries and his father's occupation as an avant-garde film director helped him to gain appreciation for creativity in various forms that we will see in the novel. Though never confirmed by Danielewski, critics have insisted that her, his personal life reflected in his novels. Uh, I would like to introduce the novel to you but uh, the plot organization of the novel is so complicated that it would be a bit difficult uh, to follow the uh, plot organization. Uh, most uh, of the critics define uh, Mark Danielewski's debut novel, House of Leaves, as a novel about a film within a novel within a novel. As can be seen from the definition, it is very difficult to give a concrete plot, but I will try to do my best. Uh, House of Leaves is the name of the book written by Zampano, a recently deceased blind man, and edited by Johnny Truans, a tattoo artist who finds the manuscript in the blind man's house in Los Angeles. The manuscript is an academic criticism of a documentary film called The Navidson Record, an account of a film and history and interpretations of and reactions to it. The film, uh, the film is about a house uh, owned by the Pulitzer Prize winning photojournalist Will Navidson and his family. Uh, Navidson moves into a house in the country and set, uh, sets up cameras in every room to capture the family's everyday life. One day, uh, the family finds an appearance of a closet-like space between two bedrooms. Uh, the Navidson and his friends measure the house to discover that it is bigger from the inside than the outside. The dimension of the house defy explanation and continue to shift until another hallway appears in one of the walls of the living room. New rooms and spaces open up inside the house. When uh, Davidson and his friends explore the staircase, they lose contact with the other people in the house. The film records show nothing but only darkness. The situation de derives uh, various characters in the novel to insanity, murder, and death. The entire experience is recorded as documentary style on video and is edited into the Navidson record. 
Although the main storyline is that of the Navidson Report, the story of Johnny Truant is also told in the House of uh, Leaves. In this introduction part, Johnny describes how he came across Zampano's manuscript when he moved in his house. He becomes obsessed with the documentary and Zampano's life. He begins to edit the old man's notes and tell his own story in the footnotes. Gradually, his obsession leads him isolation, paranoia, and terror. While he is reading the scrap notes of Zampano for editing, his memories begin to haunt him. His difficult childhood and the unstable relation with his mother, Pedafina, are gradually revealed over the course of the book. Uh, as seen, House of Leaves is a polyphonic novel, as it consists of different narrative voices. Uh, there are five narrative voices uh, in the novel. Uh, the first one is the Navidson Record, which is the haunted house story of the Navidson family on Ash Tree Lane and accompanying, uh, accompanying uh, cinematic pieces. Uh, the second one is Zampano's commentary and critical material. The third one is Johnny Truant's narrative. Uh, the fourth one, the mysterious editors and additional material. And uh, there is another narrator, uh, Johnny's mother, Perafina, and her letters in the book's second appendix. Uh, now I would like to have a look at the paratextual elements in the book, because the book is uh, rich with paratextual elements. Uh, with regard to typographical aspects of narration levels, the editors choose to assign different typefaces for different narrations. For example, uh, Zampana uses Times New Roman, Johnny Truant uses Courier, the editors write in Bookman, and Johnny's mother, Pelafina, writes in Dante. The different fonts used in the novel serves, uh, serve as a way for the reader to easily determine which of these multiple narrators' parts they are currently reading. The font change may also signify something deeper about the narrator. As can be seen from the examples on the screen, uh, this is Johnny Truant's uh, parts, and the font uh, is completely different than the other ones. As, can be, as again can be seen from the examples, the font types change according to the narrator. Uh, it is not only the fonts that affect the reading experience of the readers. Uh, the use of colors has also functional effect in, the, uh, in this process. Uh, the word house appears in blue in the name of the book House of Leaves. According to some critics, the blue color has been chosen to refer to the blue screen, blue screen in film. Uh, Sorry for the photograph because uh, the blue is not seen properly, but the word house is written in blue in the uh, cover of the book. You see uh, red uh, and crossed out sentences in the examples, as seen in this example. The use of red and crossed out sentences, especially in Zampano's passages, provides hints to the reader that Zampano revises the manuscript. This may also make the reader think there, uh, that there is something Zampano disagrees or that makes him uncomfortable. Uh, I mentioned about uh, the use of footnotes in the book. Traditionally, a footnote in a text is used to present a research, uh, 
to provide a citation that either validates or refuses a statement, uh, to provide interpretative commentary on an article within the text, uh, or suggest further reading. However, in House of Leaves, the footnotes are written by Johnny Zampano and by the editor, most notably an aim to remove the reader from one narrative path and place him or her uh, on another. There is a reason to use footnotes in the book. In House of Leaves, Danieleski defies standard expectations of the reader from its cover page to the final page. His novel is characterized by experimental choices in form, such as multiple narratives, multiple fonts, and different colored inks, unconventional page layouts that forces readers to physically turn the book to varying de degrees, hundreds of footnotes, detailed appendices, including obituaries, obituaries, collages, photographs of paintings, and an index. As can be seen, the uh, novel is uh, paratextually rich. The novel is considered as an ergodic and sine-iconic fiction, uh, according to most of the critics. Mark Danielewski has uh, described his uh, own work as sine-iconic, in which text and image merge to provide the reader with an entirely new perspective. Uh, he uses the words uh, sign and icon and creates a new word uh, as sign iconic and uh, explains uh, the word, the uh, concept as uh, following, rather than engage those factual faculties of the mind, remediating the pictorial or those visual faculties, remediating language. The sign iconic simultaneously engages both in order to lessen the significance of both and therefore achieve a third perception no longer dependent on sign and image for remediating a word in which the mind plays no part. In other words, the impact, significance, or meaning of the book derives from its visual and physical features as much or more than from its text. The sine-iconic nature of the novel provides readers with another way of interpreting the novel and deduce meaning from, it, from its content. Uh, the word ergodic, uh, first used by Arstead, and she defines ergodic literature as a text in which non-trivial effort is required to allow the reader to traverse the text. In other words, the reader must use all the ways to understand a text. In House of Leaves, as mentioned before, different narratives are differentiated by different font sizes, colors, or types, and uh, become interwoven with one another. With the use of copious footnotes within other footnotes, empty references, codes from texts written in other languages, unconventional layout, and etc., House of Leaves is certainly a novel that requires non-trivial effort to traverse, similar to many electronic hypertexts. Owing to its typographical presentation, uh, red and crossed out sentences, blue words, uh, big and small fonts, sentences hidden in corners, italicized and bold words, phrases that run along margins, phrases that form circles, almost blank pages and pictures and paintings, the book borders on a position between analogous space and digital space. Given that the book first points to the evolving characteristics of textuality in today's digital age, uh, illustrates how digital media revol uh, revolution revolutionizes uh, traditional uh, 
storytelling and create a literary labyrinth awaiting to be explored. Uh, my colleague Hilal Arkazancı uh, will try to shed light on how digital technology may cause challenges to translators. Uh, for example, in what ways the challenges engendered by digital technology are different from those faced by the translators of analogous texts and the potential translation strategies to overcome the problems arising from such books iconic and diagrammatical assemblage. Yes, Hilal, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, as we have seen in the first part of our study, current technological advancements in today's digital age enable writers of literary texts to organize and combine numerous modes and tools to create coherence within complex texts. Multimodal potentialities in literary translation hence gain utmost significance at this point. And as one peer suggests, new media require new forms for dealing with language and literature. And in this second part of our study, uh, we intend to explore the difficulties translators may experience while translating a multimodal literary text where different modes are in an interplay with one another in the construction of text's meaning. Taking into account the multimodal nature of the novel, we can reasonably suggest that the challenging features in House of Leaves cannot be limited to its verbal content and should encompass different semiotic modes that constitutes the text. We would like to start off this second section by stating that Gökhan Sarı, the Turkish translator of House of Lives, was given the special jury award for having undertaken the Turkish translation of such a challenging multimodal text with huge success. A multimodal text produces meaning through, sorry, a multimodal text produces meaning through an interplay of two or more modes. For instance, in a picture book, not only the print, but also the image contributes to the entire narration of the story, but they also do so in completely different ways. Images may simply illustrate or expand on the story or can be utilized to narrate different dimensions of the story, as Gojero and Sand suggest. Multimodal authors creatively merge different modes in differing arrangements to transmit the meaning, moving the emphasis backwards and forwards between various modes throughout the text, as Cope and Calentis underline. And here, uh, multimodality involves different modes, for instance, the written mode, the spoken mode, the visual mode, the audio mode, the special mode, and gestural mode. Um, in this context, what makes in this context, what makes House of Leaves a multimodal text is the varied typography, unusual textual layouts, and page design, including the concrete arrangement of text for visual purposes, the inclusion of images either illustrative, diagrammatic, or photographic, footnotes, and use of color as given state. Therefore, the translator needs to have multimodal literacy or semiotic knowledge that concerns how each mode conveys meaning in different ways in the text, where each mode has its own specific task and function in the meaning-making process, as Cress suggests. And if within the context of um, House of Lives, the multimodal modally literate translator knows the multimodally literate translator know, uh, knows how the pages are stacked together, how ergonic, the ergonic, ergodic quality of the text may guide the reader, 
why the pages are mirrored, reversed, or rotated in different fonts, how to go through the left and right sides of the page simultaneously, why the coloration of words that, carry, that carries symbolic information varies throughout the novel. At this point, the question we need to ask are as follows. How does the translation of House of Leaves differ from a conventional novel? And does the translator treat the translation of a multimodal um, text in the same way as any other text that comprises conventional typography? All the translatorial agents, such as the translator, editors, graphic designers, book printers, are pieces of a translational mosaic here because they are all responsible for preserving the translated text's layout and typographic design along with its content in all the text unity because the mosaic translation of household lives involves not only interlingual translation but also intersemiotic translation which is an interpretation of verbal signs by means of signs of nonverbal sign systems to use Jacobson's words. And the translatorial um, agents involved in the translation of House of Leaves need to take care of the unconventional textual layout and page design, varied typography, different colors to deliver the content, footnotes, flip book sections, blending of literary genres and in our case, horror and romance, along with genres used to create visual effect, for example, in our case, newspaper clippings and um, the characters' monologues. Here, let's see uh, how the interaction between the image and the verbal mode, I mean, the visual mode, special mode and the verbal mode is reproduced in the Turkish translation. Here you see, uh, this is an episode from Exploration 5 chapter. The words are placed vertically across a double page spread. The translator hence needs to rotate the book in order to read the, uh, the pages. As we can see, the Turkish translator composed the iconic special design of the narrator in such a way that shows how the main character, Navidson, struggles to pull himself up and reach the last step. The translator um, obviously manages to, manages to organize the pages in order to help the Turkish reader visualize Navidson climbing his way up. The reading process, designed by the translator, pushes the Turkish trans reader's eye, eye route upward. The design of the verbal material in the Turkish translation creates the image of a letter, letter that bridges horizontally across the pages. In the Turkish translation, we see that each rung of the letter is constructed by a cluster of two short lines of words, and sometimes this number is raised to uh, three words at the maximum. The translator's unconventional arrangement of words in an ascending way results in an uncomfortable and old reading process. However, this uncomfortable and old reading process is necessary in the Turkish translation as is in the original. And this uh, old reading process is part and parcel of the mosaic text. And uh, this should not be and cannot be criticized in the Turkish translation. As you can see, the reader's eyes can leap across the spaces visually cluster hopping. Now, our analysis suggests the following results. The Turkish translator's major task seems to have been providing the Turkish reader with some physical interaction with the book by recreating the book's multimodal design. The Turkish translator uses parallel lines of equal length in order to reproduce the visual and spatial image of rungs, which in turn contributes to the Turkish reader's visualization of Navidson's ascent. 
the Turkish translator has recreated the source text reader's reading experience for the target reader through the use of not only verbal, but also the special and visual modes. This point reveals that multimodal texts create much more complex reading routes than other texts that enable uh, the reader to experience a, con a conventional reading process. In the case under our discussion in House of Lives, the Turkish translator uses words in such a creative way to produce the Turkish reader with both left, right, and top-down processing, which in turn enabled the Turkish reader to hop from one rung to another in order to follow Navidson's nonlinear climbing rules. And thank you very much. These are our conclusions. To show our references.